What's going on guys, in today's video I'll be showing you guys how to create a custom water physics system in Roblox Studio that you can use for, for example, a sinking ship game. As you can see on the screen right now, there's a room with a large amount of water connected to a bunch of other rooms that have less water in it, and when the doors to those rooms are open, the water flows in, and when they're closed, it stops. By the way guys, if you guys just want to download the project file without following the tutorial or anything like that, you can go down below this video and press the join button and become a channel member. It's only $2, I know it's kind of annoying because it costs money, but I think this is a fair price, and you also get access to the project files from all of my other videos I ever posted on this channel. Alright guys, so as you can see, this is the system inside of Roblox Studio. Um, I actually built like a ship around it, I think that's what I used in the demo at the start of the video. I think it looks cool. It looks kind of like a sinking ship game. Um, so I'm actually just going to slide this uh, overlay, like kind of model that makes it look good out of there. And I'm going to just reveal the core base system. So I'm actually just going to highlight all this so you guys can see it a little bit better. Because this is not actually uh, one giant rectangle. It's divided up into little pieces. As you can see there, there's five sections and each one of them corresponds directly with a room in the ship so each of these sections is a room and each room has a door and basically the idea behind the system is uh there's one core like central part that raises up until it gets to a certain point into which is you know where it stops and there's a script that is going around checking if any of these doors are open and if the doors are detected to be open then it's going to raise the water level or part complete like adjacent to the central water source and it continues on over here where basically it checks if this adjacent room has a raised water level and if it does then it's going to raise it to match it so that's uh maybe maybe it was a bit confusing i don't know if i explained it well but basically the idea is to just have one part that changes size increases in size and then have a bunch of other parts around it that also increase in size if these doors are detected to be open and this is ran by only a few simple scripts um it's two scripts per door uh that are only a few lines each and one central water script right here which i'm going to open up in a minute and that's i think 69 to 70 lines max this is not uh too difficult guys uh, like uh, this is something that you guys can do at home if you want to. Right, so I just opened up the script. If you guys want to copy this down, feel free to. You can absolutely do that. That's what the purpose of this video is for, is to show you guys how to do this. I'm just going to scroll through it a bit, and then I'm going to start breaking down kind of what's going on here. So up here, I'm just setting some basic variables. I'm just trying to set um, variables of all of this down here to make it a little cleaner. Um, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, right here, what I'm doing is I'm checking of the size of the central part, uh, which I explained what that was earlier. The central part um, is less than 25.5 studs because that is my max side that I want the water to flood to. I don't want it to flood past that. And if that uh, the size, the y-axis, the size, like the height of that part is less than 25.5, then it's going to continue with the script. And it's going to continue by executing this code. So specifically what this does is it just increases the size of the central part. And then down here, it goes on to check if any of the doors are open, right, uh, for the system. And if the doors are open, if the doors, the value for the door being open is true, then it's going to increase the size of those adjacent blocks as well. If that makes sense. Same exact thing here. Down here, it's actually a little bit different. This isn't checking for the central part. This is actually checking if the dining room water which I'm just going to visualize this for you guys right now. This, because it's uh, the dining room of the ship, if this is greater than this, then this is going to increase to match size. That's what that bottom block is there. Because obviously it wouldn't make sense if this part was checking for the size of that, because obviously water doesn't flow like that. If this is up here, then water can't run into this room, right? So I just switched up the script a little bit, made it so this part checks for the height of this instead, right? Um, so this is the main water script. So if you guys want to copy that now, I'm going to show you guys the script for the doors. This is uh, very simple. I have in each door, there's a proximity pump called closed door, a bool value called open and another proximity prompt called open door. So each proximity prompt actually has a script in it. They're both very similar. I'm just going to open up each of these so I can show you. This is for the closed door. All this is doing is changing the transparency and the collisions of the door part just to give the illusion that it's being opened or closed. Um, and then it also disables and enables the 
proximity prompts, depending on whether or not you're opening or closing the door, whether or not it's closed or open. The main thing that you want to pay attention to though here is that it changes the value open and open is this value. So this is the closed door script. So if you close the door, that value will be false. And here's the open door script and that value is set to true. And that value is used to determine whether or not the parts or the water parts should match the adjacent water part in height. And um, I'm just going to go through these other door scripts. If you guys want to check those out too, closed door, open door, again, exactly the same. And each of these are labeled individually. So door one, door three, door two, whatever, they're, they're all numbered, you know, so they can be um, called upon in the water script and identified so we can see exactly which door is open and where the water should be flooding in. So that's basically it. Um, it definitely looks a lot more complicated on the surface than it actually is. If you guys have any questions about this, leave it in the comments. I will get back to you. I'll try my best to respond. Thank you so much for watching and uh, like and subscribe for the next video.